Um, I think one is a good resource, but not the best of performances. Uh, looking at how we expect this team to play. One thing I've come to realize and accepted as a journalist is we can't compare this particular Black Stars to what we had between 2006 to 2015. I think from 2017 coming, we have been on a transition and we've not handled the transitional phase so well when it comes to managing a lot of talents within this setup. Um, I believe under this coach, uh, we need to be patient enough and give him time and see what is actually going to bring. And um, we need to work a lot of things around this team, especially from the defensive structure, from the midfield partnership, and even attacking patterns. Uh, we need to work a lot in making sure that we have automatisms in every single area of the pitch to have a certain standard that we live up to that particular standard. You look at Senegal, you look at Egypt, you look at Morocco, the spine is there, the structure is there. There are so many automatisms and um, they, they've known themselves for a period of time, they've been consistent for a period of time. So when they are playing, they know the decisions to take at any moment in time. But with this team, today Gideon will play, tomorrow we'll have another player coming in. Denis Odoi will play today, Tarek Lamte will come in. The other time, it might even be Denis Odoi. We have Salesu, it will come to movement. So there is a lot of inconsistencies. And I believe some partnerships too are not also working. Especially with Salisu and um, Juku. I think both of them, they are, they are not a front-footed kind of defenders. Where they can actually go in on the front, where one stays and one goes. So we need a right balance, a type A or type B. Not necessarily type A, both playing at the back of the defense. And Salis and um, Thomas Tepa, there is a lot of work to be done around them. I think none of them is, is a proper ball progressor when it comes to moving the ball, running with the ball like... 30 years, 40 years, no. Unless you have Majid Ashiberu. This actually makes Kudus drop so deep. But we need Kudus in and around the penalty box area. That is where he's dangerous. The moment you have Salis and Pate, Kudus will need to drop back, pick up the ball in that particular area, be the poor progressor and be the creator at the same time. Two drops in one. But look at when you have Salis and Ashiberu and you have Kudus. That is why Kudus scored a lot of goals at the after. He was always around the penalty box. He looks to create, he looks to score. So we need to get a profile of Majid Ashimeru and we should be looking at a profile of Michael Asien, 40 yard pass, 30 yard pass, a profile of like Sudo Muntari, 30 yard shot, 40 yard shot, and we'll be good to go. The attackers, we are good with talent, but I think we need to work on parties. That is what we are done. Today, I wouldn't be mad. I said to myself at halftime that if we lost this game, I because what I saw in that first half, I saw for the first time I saw the team trying to do something. I saw a sequence, I saw a pattern, I saw Ghana dominating possession. Yes, we got caught on the break a couple of times, but I love to look at the process because this is a very young team. The average age is around 24 years and I was very impressed with the performance and I think their maturity is years above what they are showing. Two comebacks in very difficult conditions, I think they are learning to adapt to the pressure in different ways and I'm really, really proud of the team. Um, how will you describe Jordan Hattrick today? Look, I think for, for Jordan, there's even more extra pressure on him because I mentioned that this is a very young team and the mere fact that he's one of the more experienced men means that he has that extra responsibility of not just playing well but also leading by example. And you could tell from his utterances at the press conference that for a while now he's, he wanted to play as the number nine. That's what he grew up doing, but he's not had that opportunity. And I think it's good for him to, to score and score a hat-trick and it sort of sends his confidence to the roof at the moment. Really, really impressive performance. And what made me even happier was not the three goals that he scored, but any time Ghana conceded, Jordan was the one talking to the team about how they should press, how they should react. He kept on talking to the young players. And I, I love that. Those are the things that the camera doesn't capture. For me, I would even rate that higher than the hat trick. The goals were very important, but the fact that he's leading on the example, as he's leading us an example on the pitch with his actions, I loved every bit of that. How will you rate uh, our game today? Over thing? Yeah, I think the first half was. I thought the first half was great, and then they came in the second half, and it was a madness. Look, I think for the first 35, 40 minutes in that second half, they were playing like they were on steroids, like. This was a team. Look, I've never seen a Black Stars team this motivated. Maybe me being in the stadium added to that effect. But the agency was so high, and you could just feel that they were going to score. So if I was going to rate this match over 10, I, I, I think this is 
probably an eight. The reason why I'm not giving it a nine over or a nine or a ten is because we conceded. It would have been nice if we didn't. But I think this this is one of the best games I've watched as a Ghanaian for a very, very long time. Impressive. Um, very impressive performance from the Black Stars um, to come back from a goal down in such a difficult game and to win by four goals or three in a, in a way we saw it happen for me was super impressive. That's the best way I can describe what we saw here, you know, in this game between Ghana and Syria. So, yeah, super impressive. I mean, I've seen the Black Stars concede and go down against teams here in Kumasi. And when the stadium was quiet, I've seen a lot of Ghanaian Black Stars teams you know, struggle to get back into it the game and to see this Black Stars team manage to not only pull themselves up and equalize but go ahead to score you know in the second half they were picked I mean they were hard to consider the game but they held on to ensure they got the three points amazing work done by the coach and the Black Stars team. Um, can you describe uh, Jordan's performance? Ah, ah, how else can you describe what he's done? I mean Jordan are you he, he divides opinions and and I love what he said even at the post-match press conference where he said that for him, he's been played out, out of position several times because if you really watch him critically in the game today and the game against Mali where he was played centrally, not on the wings like we've seen him do for Crystal Palace for some time and also for the Black Stars. This is the best way to keep Jordan Ayew in the Black Stars team and for him to bag a hat-trick, brilliant. The last time we saw a Ghanaian player score a hat-trick in the Black Stars was 2017. I think it was Thomas Pate, that's Okoda Hattrick. And to see Jordan do that in Kumasi at a time where there are issues around his senior brothers, including the Black Stars team, amazing stuff. So brilliant as well from Jordan Ayu to get the Hattrick in this difficult, crucial game here in Kumasi. How will you rate our performance? Ratings for the Black Stars. I think that, see, I'm looking beyond the scoreline, but a simple fact of the team coming from a goal down, just like it was against Mali. And it's just a four-day period. On Thursday, we were down 1-0 against the Malians in Bamako. They came back and won the game two goals to one. And, you know, the, the way they did it, the last-minute goal from Jordan. Then today, they score first in the first half. But against all the odds, CR recovers and goes ahead to lead by two goals to one. Ordinarily, a lot of teams will be broken by this and will struggle to get back in the game. But for them to have, again, from the I mean, recess, come back strong into the game and end up winning by four today, I think that if you want to ask me of any rating, a 9.5 is the least out of 10. I'll give the Black Stars for today's performance. Thank you. <coughs> All right, so, uh, Ghana 4, Central Africa 3. Uh, what are your thoughts? Massive, massive, man. Two, two results in two games, Charlie. I don't remember the last time we saw the Black Stars be this good. And I think Otoado has said it on countless times that sometimes the team will go down. But the most important thing is how you respond. And for me, all the two games that we've played, we've come from behind. And the, what makes it great is the fact that we've not seen the guys play with this level of agency, with this level of mentality. I don't know what Otuado did and how he's been able to convert these boys to play like this. And for me, salute to the, to the head coach and salute to the boys. I'm, I don't know how to put my words together, but I'm impressed by the performance so far. The most important thing is winning, but sometimes it's how you win the games. To go down, come back, it tells you the mentality of the boys. I'm pretty much excited. So for you, if you have seen the Black Stars team performance, how are you going to look at today? Today, I, I, would, I would say 8, 8, 8 or 8.5, because uh, the, the, some of the goals that we considered we could have prevented it. And I, I think Otuado mentioned it in the post-match that perhaps in the first half, he was thinking too much or he was overthinking because he wanted them to play in a certain way and it was a bit complicated. And that's why when he switched to the one that the players were more comfortable with, it actually worked. And that's good, that's coaching. Knowing, identifying your problem and reacting to it and getting the results. Salute to the guys. 8.5 because we, we left some few spaces but credit to Central African Republic they are very good they are very good side a lot of us don't respect them because of their name but the kind of football they've been playing super it, it was a mad game I honestly thought the Bavaria run was coming to an end but we, we went up a gear and we, we got the win 4-3 in the end Central African Republic will feel hard done by 
Central African Republic probably should have gotten something from this game, but it's the Papaya Sports Stadium, and it has shown that it can help the Black, Ghana Black Stars on this quest to make it to the United States at the World Cup. And they didn't disappoint. The fans were amazing. The support was unrelenting. It was it was amazing to watch. Now, um, talk about the pace of the battle, man. For them two matches that you played, how do you see this game? It's been good, I have to say. But Otto, in my opinion, the tweaks that he made in the I mean the changes that he put in inside the game for this one, I was a bit uh, tentative. I was not happy with it. Especially Kamal Din Suleiman. I didn't think Kamal Din Suleiman deserved to start this one ahead of probably Noama. Uh, but he was the coach. I decided to see how things would go and in, after six minutes, it was going well until Central African Republic came in. Second half, I think uh, there was a switch in position between um, Isahaku, yeah, and uh, I think uh, Kamal Dean as well. So that brought some needed change in the setup, and it was great to watch how it affected how the game went. So I enjoyed that. So, uh, your general rating for this Look, I, I, I was one of the people that said that I don't think that Otto is a magician. He's going to have to find a way to win whilst trying to build the team. And so far, so good. Two wins in two competitive games. It's been okay so far. But the defensive lapses need to be worked on. And if we find a way to win whilst working on it, I'm a happy man.